Give us one good lap, please. Just one good lap. Attempt number seven. Just one good lap. I would like just one lap that's connected. Today, we're testing ABS and traction control in three different permutations to find out whether disabling them partly or outright actually makes us faster. We'll be recapping everything we learned on our direct driving tests at the very end, so stay tuned. Ever since my review of GT7, I've had a small influx of comments from people asking, why the hell were you driving with counter steering assist on? To which I naturally respond with, I'm an idiot and accidentally left it on after switching from controller to wheel and that session was when I happened to record about 90% of the footage of the review. Turns out that turning it off actually made the cars a heck of a lot easier to drive. Go figure. It got me thinking though, given that Gran Turismo has a very unique take on assists, why don't I actually put the main ones to the test and see whether disabling them all actually makes us quicker? We'll be putting two different cars to the track for this test a humble little MX-5, and a far less humble KTM crossbow. One is a low-powered, light FR sports coupe, and the other is a track day-focused MR turbocharged beast. No points for guessing which is going to be harder to drive without assists. We'll be testing them both with TC and ABS on, then TC off and ABS on, and finally with both assists off. ABS will always be set to default because there's very little difference between it and weak, while TC will always be set to 1 because any higher just robs us of way too much engine power. Subscribe for more stupid GT7 tests and be sure to let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below. Now let's get scientific. Sort of. Right, we're beginning with the ABS on default and the traction control at 1. This is my go-to default startup setting for most cars in Gran Turismo 7. Mostly because it's safe, but still playful enough that you're not going to be losing too much power to the traction control. That's not to say not losing any power. So here we go, we're going to aggregate a few laps, or rather just pick the fastest lap out of the batch and see what works for us. As we've already established, of course, the ABS preference is down to the user. I haven't found very much difference whatsoever between weak and default, so we're going to just keep it on default for all of these tests to stop this getting overly convoluted for no reason. But generally speaking, there's really nothing in it between default and weak, so just pick whichever setting you're comfortable with. I would recommend default. I think comfort soft tires, so nothing crazy, don't expect insane times. We just want to set a benchmark and then put up the rest of our times against that. As they say, those that love us hurt us the most, and the Miata is a great testament to that. You can see the uh, traction control kicked in, stopped the rear from slipping there. Don't know whether that helped or hindered me, right? Let's do this. There we go, come on. Let's get it. You know what? You know what? I'll take it. A 112.196 with traction control on 1 and ABS on default. So let's make our way down from here. ABS is going to stay on default, but we're going to put the TC on 0. Alright, if you look in the bottom right corner, TC down to 0. ABS, as you can see, is still on down there. So here we go. How, if at all, is this going to affect our times? I rarely ever find that the first lap is the best because the start isn't the best. Ooh, a little bit spicy on that entry there. Oh, yeah, straight away the car starts breaking out on us. It becomes a bit more playful. Just feel it out in the slap, see what is and isn't possible. Definitely have to be a bit more mindful about what you do with the car. Let's get a really nice wide one, actually. So that can happen with traction control off. Okay, run up number two. <laughs> Gotta take it easy, remember you can spin out here. Oh, the mega Dory Dory line, here we go. Whoa! 
was not expecting that. Let's go in for another lap. That wasn't even perfect. It's giving me a pretty good idea of what's going on. So we're already about one tenth or so, I think, quicker. Or well, half a tenth or so, whatever the case, we're quicker without the TC. I wonder how much we can improve on this. Can we get it into the 111s? The game would suggest yes, we can. As you can see, it's a lot more lively, a lot more playful, the MX-5, with no TC. ABS still keeping us tightly on the track. definitely have to do your own traction control on that corner. That last hairpin really wants to spit you out. But I'm hoping we're still on the positives. I'd love to get a 111. I don't think I've gotten a 111 here before. We really just pelts it. Pelts it through here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, so close. So close. Have we got a good run out of there? It's always hard to tell, especially with no TC. It's always like, ugh, oh, do I push harder or do I risk breaking out the rear end? I think I might have nailed this. I think I might have nailed it. Come on. Oh my God, that's insane. I've, I've never gotten that time before. That's, uh, that's kind of impressive uh, for my meager skill level anyway, and considering I'm not using load cell pedals, so throttle's actually kind of hard to modulate on this low-end CSL set of pedals. So it seems in the case of the humble MX-5, keeping the ABS on default and turning the traction control off allows you to apply a lot more of your power, keep the car rotated with the throttle as well, and kind of give you a bit more flexibility and apply a bit more of the power so long as you're ginger with your throttle application. So in the case of the MX-5, it seems like there is a case to be made for the traction control being disabled. Now we're going to disable everything. All right, ABS is off. Traction control is off, and I am afraid. I know what this means. I've tried it before. And uh, it's going to be a very hit or miss run for us. It might take a few attempts, so just bear with me. I will say, wow, okay. The braking distances do seem a bit shorter when you nail it. And I will say your mileage may vary. If you have a higher quality set of pedals, obviously if you're a PC sim racer, if you manage to make them compatible with the PlayStation, you may find that keeping the ABS off is, is less of an impediment to your driving than it is to mine. Ugh, so I'm always kind of afraid. And now I'm applying the throttle too fast. All right, it was a warm-up lap. It was a warm-up lap. All warmed up. All warmed up. Oh, no, Ermin. Gone too wide. Gone too wide, Ermin. No, Ermin. You know what? That That is bloody good. Considering I am in mortal fear every single time I press down on the brake, for the, the peace of mind that you lose disabling the ABS, it's probably not worth it, given how much harder you have to work for the lap. Like, I wouldn't want to be driving like this in a race, and mind you, this is an easy driving road car. Come on, we can do this. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the 111. I'm not, I'm not, not feeling the 111. I would say based on this experience, it's not worth keeping the ABS off. I, I never really got the sensation that I was going to improve on the lap time I set with the ABS on. Traction control off, definitely a potential positive in the MX-5. Now, based on what we've discovered here, I would say that you definitely want to keep the ABS on at all costs, at least with the MX-5, but the TC, your mileage may vary. I'd say that there's higher performance potential with the TC off, but if you have a lead throttle foot, you may want to start with TC at one and work your way back. With the ABS, I never quite got the sensation that I was headed toward a lap that was at all faster than the run where I had the ABS engaged, so you really don't seem to stand to gain all that much for the increased risk of locking your wheels and potentially botching your lap entirely, so definitely keep the ABS on in my humble opinion, but TC, well, consider turning that one off, at least on the MX-5. What we're going to see now is what happens when we increase the horsepower and lower the weight? Does this calculus change at all? We're in the KTM crossbow now. 
a lot more powerful and a lot lighter at the same time. Now with this car, we're of course starting with my default setup. We've got the traction control at one and we've got the ABS on default. So let's see how we go. This is definitely gonna be more of a warm up lap for me. And I'm already very thankful to have the ABS on. I'm feeling it. I can feel the traction control immediately kicking in, cutting my power, and I'm thankful for all of it. I feel like there might be a bit of spinning involved here <laughs> before the end of the day. Definitely a bit more of a spirited experience in the uh, humble old MX-5. Now, I definitely need to tap the brake a bit more than on the MX-5 through there. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, it wants to break out there as well. Oh my god. Alright, this is going to be... It's going to be a substantially different driving experience to the MX-5. Now this, mind you, is with the, the full assist shebang. TC and ABS. Let's go. South first lap. Definitely different inputs through there. Oh, I can feel the TC kicking in through here. Oh, that's insane. That is wild. So far, this car is proving to be a bit more of a challenging prospect than the MX-5. A much faster one, no less, but still quite challenging all the same. All right, we have a chance to improve on this. All right, here's to hoping. It's about as clean as I could get it under the circumstances. Hoping we're still doing sector purples. No, Roman. No, no, no. I can feel the traction control interruptions the whole way through there. Again, I'm really not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad for me. Bit of a V-shape through there. I don't know if that's the best way to go through there. No, oh, apparently it is. Spank my button. Call me Charlie, as they say. In a friendly way. It's a G-rated channel, of course. Come on. Let's go for more purple sectors. I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood for a record. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's do the record. 102.9. I don't know whether that is or isn't the best I'm capable of with this car, but I'll take it for the time being. So 102.9, what we're going to do is take the traction control off, but keep the ABS exactly where it is and see what that does for us. I'm kind of scared, if I'm honest. All right, TC, bottom right corner. Off. <laughs> Pray for Mojo. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this is going to suck. I'm going to have to really ease into this, I think. How did I manage to understeer through? Oh, my God. <sighs> okay. Wow, okay. Wow, okay. Okay, all right, this is an entirely different driving experience. Okay, easy on the throttle. Easy on the throttle. Easy on the throttle. So easy on the throttle. Basically, you have to be facing down the road before you go full throttle. You just can't go before that. So, definitely makes the car more of a handful. I would say if you're running an endurance race, this may not be the experience that you want, having to constantly fight the rear end of the car. Again, it is overly sensitive in Gran Turismo 7 for some reason. I don't know why they've made the rear end this sensitive. Um, corroborated by my track day fiend friends who track Hurricanes and R8s and 720s and all that good stuff. Basically, it's just too sensitive, especially on corner exit. The rear just kind of breaks out on you in a way that seems somewhat unrealistic. It's one of the reasons I like to keep the TC on. It makes it feel a little bit more like a real car. It feels a bit more planted. But, you know, when in Rome, people are saying, turn the assists off and... I'm gonna try. Lord knows I'm gonna try. Wow. I'm scared. Oh, man. I'm, I'm definitely not feeling the same sense of advantage as I was in the MX-5 with the traction control being off. In the MX-5, I could feel like the power was being restrained, like what small power I had was just being kept away from me. 
Whereas in this car, I feel like the traction control may have actually been helping me because it just wants to do this all the time, as you see. So it could be a, a different strokes for different folks. It could be a on a per case basis with traction control. That's what I'm leaning toward right now. I'm going to try and get a slightly faster lap than this though. It's an easy over this. One good lap before we turn the ABS off and just end the channel basically. Herman quits sim racing. An arcade game killed him. <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna love that comment. I can't do it. I just, I mean, it probably tells you just the, the sheer lack of consistency. Now, maybe if you had higher quality pedals or more skill than I have, you could be more consistent or consistently better, but I can't even get into the 102s like this. Completely different experience to the MX-5. Bear in mind, this is a, a mid-engined rear-wheel drive car, so a very different set of parameters. Fair bit more powerful, a fair bit lighter as well. So I guess the calculus changes in this case. I would say with traction control, it's looking like a case-by-case -case basis. Come on. How is that not purple? Nah, <laughs> nah, no chance. No chance. It's just not worth, not worth that setting. It's not worth the lack of repeatability. It's not worth the lack of consistency. Just like a le less than a millimeter, less than a nanometer of movement is the difference between on the limit and the car being completely gone. So I think we're seeing some of the shortfalls in the current GT7 model here. It's very, very uh, rear end happy on throttle on corner exits in a way that's unlike the real world. But that's okay. Uh, that's what we have TC for. Conditionally, I would definitely turn it back up to one on this particular vehicle. On the MX-5, different story. But now, let's see what it's like with all assists off. I bet you're probably looking forward to this about as much as I am. Okay, ABS off. Traction control off. Doubly pray for Mojo. Need pedals that are worth about $7,000 more for this. That, oh my, immediate lock. It's an immediate lock up. It's an immediate lock up with this car. Feather it, feather it. Oh god, oh god, feather it, feather it, feather it, feather it. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible without ABS. It's terrible without TC. Just an awful thing to drive. I'd call that a warm up, but it didn't really feel like a warm up. It just kind of felt terrible. So, all right, let's go for something marginally less terrible if we can. Oh, wow, it actually locked up. Okay, all right. How are you still locked? I'm barely touching the brakes. Oh, it's so terrible. You're always on a knife's edge with both pedals now. Like driving a drift car. An awful, awful, awful drift car. I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it keeps locking. I'm, I'm barely... I'm barely... I'm barely touching the brake. I think... If you're going to drive cars like this with no ABS, you're going to need a load cell and you're going to need it jacked right up. You're going to need to really exert some pressure on that brake for this to make any degree of sense to you, because it's certainly not making any sense to me on these CSL pedals right now. Given that this is the kind of hardware most of you would be running on the PS5, I don't think I can really bring myself to recommend taking off the ABS. It's definitely experienced in like self-flagellation though, you know? It's like if you don't like yourself, how is that best? Like how bad will my prior runs for that to be the best? Oh my god, I'm just barely, I'm barely touching the brake. I'm barely touching the brake. We're in the 4... 104 range. That's how crazy this is. I've yet to put together something resembling a clean lap. How? How? I just, I barely touched the brake. Ah, right, here we go again. It, ju it just won't, it won't, it just, it won't, it just won't. I, I don't know how many thousands of dollars of hardware you need in order for this to even be possible, but I don't have it. I'm not able to deal in, in such light foot pressures. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. I would like just one lap that's connected. It doesn't even have to be fast. I just, I want to know that I did one lap like this, that it's possible, you know? And then I can tell you to never run this because it just makes no sense at all for racing. Just like zero sense. Give us one good lap, please. Just one good lap. Attempt number seven. Just one good lap. Just one good lap. That's all I want. Brakes super nice and early. Still lock up somehow magically. Got a horrible run through there. I'm using every last bit of concentration I have for this. Yes, do the V. 
You know what? I don't even care. I'll take it. Yep, the game will take it too. Oh, that's a, that's a terrible time, but you know what? I'll take it. This stopped being fun around about half an hour ago. Now to answer the video's question, are you actually faster without assists in Gran Turismo 7? And the answer, of course, as with all things in life is, it depends. In the MX-5's case, TC at zero was notably and obviously faster and allowed me to control and finesse the car a lot more. TC on zero on the KTM, made it almost impossible to drive. I mean, not, not almost impossible to drive, but I was burning away so much power on the corner exits that it really became very self-defeating. ABS, 99 to 100% of the time, I would recommend just keeping on default. I haven't seen any actionable evidence that it hinders your lap times in any which way. And the, the increase in repeatability, the improvements in consistency, far outweigh any potential marginal benefit they may be from keeping the ABS on. And ultimately, if you really want to showcase how good you are at braking, just, just threshold brake anyway. If the ABS doesn't kick in, you'll still be getting all the benefits of not having the ABS on. So it's really up to you at the end of the day. Now, one thing I will say is, TC at zero is a weird proposition in Gran Turismo right now. I've been speaking to a lot of my friends who are track day maniacs, having driven 720s, R8s, 488s, basically the closest you can get to GT cars in the real world. They all say that the traction on corner exits is quite poor and unlike real life in GT7. And I agree, as somebody that owns an over 400 horsepower FR car in real life, when you put the traction down, when you put the power down in real life on corner exits, there's a sense of stability, a sense of nestling into the corner exit that kind of doesn't exist in Gran Turismo currently. So I think that's something they still need to patch out of their physics model. Again, your impressions may vary, your perspective may vary, but I would say that for many cars, turning the traction control to one actually makes them behave more like they would in real life. Take that as you will. Subscribe to the channel for more GT7 content. I hope you enjoyed this little test as much as I enjoyed running it. And uh, make sure to grab yourself some fine Fanatec gear in the description down below to help support us. Leave me your comments. Let me know what you think, what you want to see in the future. And until that next one, I'll see you all later.